Hey YouTube, Savandros here. Today we're going to be looking at grease pencil add-ons that I think are essential for your workflow. So I'm not going to be going over all features of every add-on that I'm showing in this video. I'm just going to be showing the most essential features that I think would help you out. I'm also going to show how to install add-ons at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. To start off with Niji G Pen, first we have a special eraser that gets added to our tools. It also adds a smart fill tool. We'll see here that normally when you create a fill and you try to erase it, it gets erased in a very odd way like this. But when you use Niji G Pen's eraser, you can set it to erase fills or stroke and fill. So as you can see, it just erases it like regular. Sometimes it glitches a little bit, but you can also lasso erase like so, and you can erase like this. Just make sure not to, if you, as you see, if you erase the whole thing, nothing will get erased. You have to make sure you're erasing within the bounds of the fill. Aside from that, we also have PSD exporting. So when I open up this document, we can see that I have several things on different layers. So I have my fills and I have my lines. And I also put lights up. We can click multi-layer PSD render. And I already exported this, but I'll just show you how it comes up when I open it in another program. And as we can see here, we have our layers. If we were to hide some of them. We can hide our lines, we can hide our colors. And just to show our lines are still here and we have our background as well. Everything that's in the same grease pencil object will just go into its own folder. Next up we have Sakuga GP. Sakuga GP just gives you a lot of access to different things that we normally would have to use the properties bar for. So, here we can do things like create materials. We can both create fills and strokes, and we can also select them directly from here. So here we selected this red. Oh, and let me change my brush. And as we can see, we can just directly select our material very easily. And then we can also create a new material by just by clicking add stroke or add fill, the ones on the left our strokes, the ones on the right are fills. Then we can also select different grease pencil objects directly from here without having to go into object mode. We can also select our tools and we can move this up if we want to just directly be changing our tools here. We can do that. We can also make everything outside of our camera view lighter or darker. We can rotate the canvas and just click here to unrotate it. You can flip left or right, up and down. We can render anything quickly to export. And we can also add more buttons like undo and timeline navigation. So yeah, this is a pretty neat, really good um, add-on and this is one of my favorites. Going forward, we have Grease Pencil Tools, which is actually an official Blender add-on. And you can download this actually just by going to Edit, then go to Preferences. First, you'll have to allow online access. So you'll have to go to System and click Allow Online Access. Then you can just go to Get Extensions, Download Grease Pencil Tools. You can also look it up right here. From there, we'll get a few tools. One lets us just make strokes straight. So we can click straight stroke and we can drag this to see how straight we want our stroke to be. We also have box deform, which will allow us to edit how our drawings look like you would in a, any regular drawing application. You can click one to nine to add different points to edit. As you can see, you can also click control and the direction keys. 
and then to confirm you just click enter or spacebar and we have a new transformation aside from that we can also flip of course as we've seen in another add-on and then if we go into our add-on settings for grease pencil tools we can set different shortcuts to rotate the canvas you do have to make a combination of two of these buttons which would be control alt and shift you have to click use at least two and a button so i have it set to control and alt and if you see here i can rotate my canvas just like this then we can also click timeline we use a timeline scrub you can set this to any button you want i have it set to alt and middle mouse and then we can just scrub our timeline without having to move to the bottom or anywhere <laughs> on our timeline we can also use just navigate our layers by clicking y and you can also add new layers from here clicking plus you can hide them lock them change the opacity like so i just don't think you can move them here i'm not sure going forward we have grease pencil animator desk which is another one of my favorites here with grease pencil animated desk we can we can get all of our tools that we like to use on the side and then we can also switch straight to other modes from here and we can set shortcuts to all of these just to override the program and jump to any tool. You can also add these to quick favorites if you don't want to set a shortcut. And then you can just access that by clicking Q. What we also get here is a robust references panel where we can turn the drawings we just made into references. And then we can move them around immediately. And, uh, and these will show up on our viewport, so we have to disable them for being seen in the outliner. Luckily, it makes a separate object. So to make sure it's not seen when you export, you got to make sure you click disable and renders, which is the little camera button. We can also create an image reference from any images we have. And then we get these controls for each different image. So right now I have it set to controls on the first image that I was using, but I can just click this to set it as the active reference and turn the previous one off. And then I can rotate straight from here just by dragging. I can move it and I can change the size and I can change the opacity from here. Though it doesn't seem to be working right now. Maybe you have to reload it. but normally it's something that works. And if you want, you just delete it from here. With animated desk, we can also directly change our onion skin colors right here. Very easy. And there's a few basic ones that are set out already for us and we can save the colors we want. Then we have a few frame controls where let's say I select this frame I can make a duplicate and then there's two separate frames that are the same one. I can click clean just to get rid of all the strokes. I can delete the frame directly. I can also set the duration of a frame. 
So I can set this to one and click set duration. And as you can see on the timeline, it got shorter. Then my favorite thing about this add-on is actually that you can turn on stroke hints to show how you drew something, which is great for interpolating in Grease Pencil. So interpolation is when you transform one frame to another. In Grease Pencil, you can transform one frame to another by drawing the strokes in the same order. So here I made a triangle. And if I make another triangle, we can interpolate it by using the interpolation tool and just dragging. But as we, we can also click, go to edit mode and just hit interpolate. Hit interpolate sequence. As we can see, the drawing deforms. So to fix this, this add-on, we can see directly how we drew something originally by turning on stroke hints. So we just click this. So I drew this line first. I drew this line this way. It shows you the arrow. And then I drew that line that way. You can also just hit clone stroke, so it will automatically make the same last stroke that you made that you made in a sequence on the last frame and then if you want you can just edit it a little bit so it looks cleaner for your next frame then if we interpolate the sequence here we'll see that it goes perfectly like this and we could even make it a different shape and it will still work really well. So this can be a very powerful tool just to skip out on <laughs> animation and how long it takes. Finally, for animated desk, we also have different ways we can display tools. Um, so as you can see, I have this menu at the bottom. This is from animated desk and it just lets me skip through frames, turn on my onion skin, I can also fade layers directly from there. I can lock layers, create a new frame, copy, clear, delete and I can get rid of the header for a cleaner space and we also have more buttons so we can create a toolbox right here that will help us jump to different modes like we did in the last add-on this jumps us to edit mode and we can just do all types of things without as if we're working on a touch screen. The only bad thing is it doesn't include all the tools. <laughs> it only includes the tools that were laid out in the add-on already. You can also customize which ones you want to show and which ones you don't want to show. So yeah, that's great. And you can move them around. Going forward, we have GP draw transform, which basically just lets me move things in draw mode more easily. So I can click G to grab and just move something like this without having to edit. I can click X just to delete something. I can click E to grab something and just quickly make edits to make my drawings much better.
Then we can also click R to rotate and S for size. Nice. And we can change all of these in the add-on preferences for draw transform. Just change the shortcuts right here. Then we have GP onion peel, which is a really good add-on, but I just warn you to take off the onion skin if you're using it by going here and making sure your onion skin is off because it has crashed my application a lot of times. So onion peel. will basically just show us a more detailed onion skin when we enable it. So we can set the specific opacity we want for every frame and how far they are. As you can see, and that's mainly it. Once again, just make sure onion skin is disabled or it may crash your program. Then finally, before our bonus add on, we have we have GP tool wheel, which basically just shows us all the tools we want to set up and we can easily jump to all of them by clicking whatever shortcut we have set. And it will just pop up wherever our cursor is floating. So we then we can go into our add-on preferences for this one as well. And just select whichever tools we want to show. I have it set so it doesn't even show uh, three of the modes. And you can also change the order in which they show. You can also get this one just by going straight, straight to get extensions and looking for GP tool wheel and you can download it. Oh, and it seems there's an update. Let's see what, what it does. So our bonus add-on is actually a separate build of Blender called Blender Spa. Blender Spa basically is made by a 2D animation studio, the 2D animation studio behind the movie Claws. I just found out about this one and it actually makes Grease Pencil more friendly for 2D animators by displaying most of everything you'll use directly in draw mode. So norm, its normal layout is on the other side, like this, and then it comes with two add-ons built in that you just enable. So the main one to enable for a casual user would be Spa 2D animation. And then you can also enable the sequencer, though I'm not sure what that does. But here we can just draw easily when we come in. It's also a bigger interface, which is more friendly. Then we can use our edit tool right here and we can rotate directly with this tool, no need to switch to another tool. We can enlarge things. We can change, distort the image. We can keep it the same by holding shift while changing. We can change where it rotates from. All in all, this is a really good application, though it is experimental. I personally haven't had too many issues using it so far, and I really like it. Then we also have this sidebar where we have onion skinning that we can set directly here. We have shift and trace.
you can watch a video to see how to use all these tools. I'll link below. We can select our layers right here, as well as the different grease pencil drawings we have. We can set a grid. We can flip left and right. We get more layer controls up here. We can flip through our frames. And we can come down here to change our materials and to change our colors. So yeah, all in all, this one is probably the best version of Blender I felt to for 2D animators. And I guess another bonus I could throw in there is Touch Viewport by Nando. Um, and with this, you can just click full and click enable controls, and then you can move grease pencil by clicking by just moving with one finger on the right if you have a touch screen and if and on the left of the screen you can move up and down to zoom in and out we also get this floating radio menu which is pretty helpful i have undo on my i have undo redo i can change my brush size i can change the opacity i can hide the menu Lock camera rotation. See a view with four different views. Get full screen. And I'm not sure what this button does. So yeah, uh, this is also good and you can also make it not a radio you can make it a fixed bar instead of a menu that you can drag around and you can hide all these extra things and just make it a circle if you want and also this the size of it is fully customizable as well as the icons so pretty neat now to install these add-ons you will want to go to edit preferences and then you'll go to the add-ons tab from there we'll click install from disk then we can go to any add-on we have and you can leave the pack you can leave the folder zipped you don't have to extract it so we'll just find an add-on and then we'll click on it the zip folder should be have an icon like this and then we'll click install from disk and then it will pop up. So I guess I'll delete something just to show it. After that, after we install it, we'll automatically jump to the, after we install it, we'll automatically jump to the add-on. We just wanna make sure we have it, we have it clicked on the left and then it will be usable. Some of them will have sidebars that pop up with N and some of them are fully controlled in the add-ons tab right here. So just make sure you're checking the add-on documentation and being familiar with what you're using. That's it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more Blender tutorials. You can also watch my full Blender tutorial for 2D animation and I'll be making more videos as it comes.